Children are the future of our nation and society. The growth, well-being and welfare of the humanity lie on their tender shoulders. It is our sacred duty to facilitate and enable them to carry out this responsibility in befitting manner. Children are most susceptible and exposed to life-threatening dangers during disasters. Younger the children, greater is their vulnerability to disaster due to the inability to escape hazardous and risky situations. The grim fact that almost half of all victims of natural disasters are children under the age of 15 highlights the magnitude of vulnerability of our children. Each time a disaster occurs, masses of children are excluded from school. Many never to return. In the last two decades, India has witnessed many terrible tragedies. Snatching away scores of our precious little lives before they could bloom into their fuller potential. Why? Because most of our schools are located in vulnerable areas and are housed in weak and unsafe buildings. More importantly, they are dismally underprepared to respond to emergencies. The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child 1990 recognizes that every child has both the inherent right to life and the right to education. The danger faced by our schools by known, expected and recurring hydrometeorological and geophysical hazards threaten both of these rights. Therefore, deliberate proactive steps are needed to ensure that every school is a safe school and that children's education includes the knowledge they need to keep themselves and future generations safe. We have to keep in mind that not all disasters strike the school directly and immediately. Sometimes, schools are affected indirectly through students, staff and their families. Disasters have manifold negative impacts on the schools. It includes physical, educational, economical and psychosocial impacts. To mitigate these impacts, National School Safety Policy Guidelines were formulated. The guidelines stand for a vision of India, where all children and their teachers and other stakeholders in the school community are safe from any kind of risk due to natural hazards. The guidelines focus upon the urgent need to strengthen risk resilience of schools in urban as well as rural areas of the country. To achieve the aim of the National School Safety Policy, the National School Safety Program was put into implementation. The key to an effective school safety program lie in identifying and analyzing hazards, vulnerabilities, capacity and risk, specifically in context of a school. Identification and assessment of HVCR is the first step towards school safety and disaster risk reduction. This exercise should be conducted in every school on a regular basis to keep the children safe and studies uninterrupted. It is important to remember that incorporating hazard-resistant features in school buildings is one of the topmost components of a safe school. The teachers and school staff should act as an informed client and ensure the safety aspect of the school structures. A large number of school buildings across the country do not adhere 
to the design and construction procedures laid down in the building codes brought out by the Bureau of Indian Standards. While constructing new school buildings, it is imperative to strictly adhere to safety codes. The architectural layout of the building and all related amenities should be properly designed and constructed utilizing the services of qualified experts. All the existing school buildings which do not adhere to the building codes should be retrofitted with the help of qualified experts and engineers to make them safe. Various non-structural elements also pose a severe threat to the staff and children in event of a disaster. They include building contents such as furniture, appliances, coolers, water tanks, etc. Simple well-thought exercises such as conducting non-structural hazard hunt activity like open electricity panels, live wires if any, improper placing of cupboards and furniture, obstructions in escape routes, sharp or heavy objects at height, flower pots on the balcony, structural cracks, false ceilings, hazardous materials in labs, etc. will help in mitigating risk to certain extent. Simple mitigation measure such as securing and anchoring equipment and furniture that may present a threat during ground shaking, provision of locked panels, repair of structural cracks in building, etc., clearing obstruction in escape routes could be taken up to mitigate the threat posed by them. The school is a densely populated place and has small children that are one of the most vulnerable groups in the society. In the event of any disaster, children and teachers in an unsafe school building are at considerable risk. Therefore, every school must have its disaster management plan prepared by the school themselves. School disaster management plan is prepared after assessing specific threats to the particular school from various types of hazards. It provides planning related to response capacity and physical protection of students and staff in event of a disaster. School disaster management plan includes details regarding the geographical location of the school, number of students and teachers, identification of hazards and vulnerable locations, structural and non-structural assessment of that particular school and database of past disasters, etc. It is also recommended to prepare a floor-wise detailed evacuation plan to trust emergency preparedness and update the same. Also, make sure to test the communication system and update the school plan at regular intervals. In order to ensure an effective school safety plan, it is imperative to form task forces at schools. Task forces are teams entrusted with specific responsibility in the scenario of a disaster. These task forces include Awareness Generation Team Warning and Information Dissemination Team Search and Rescue Team First Aid Team Fire Safety Team in middle schools and above, the task forces should be created at school and shall include children above the age group of 13 to 14, school staff and teachers as members. The task of coordination should be entrusted to senior teachers. While forming the teams, gender balance should be checked and adequate fresh training should be imparted to team members. In case of primary schools, task forces should be created around the school. Youth and people who are present during the school as well as those residing in the vicinity of the school should be the members of these task forces. 
which should be coordinated by senior teachers. It is important to note that children should not be involved in those task forces where there is a life risk. One of the important ways that schools develop response capacity skills and raise awareness of the need for assessment, planning and risk reduction is by conducting regular emergency mock drills. Mock drills offer the opportunity to identify training needs, establish new reflexes and teach through action and repetition. Knowledge about life-saving aspects should also be provided by holding first aid training School disaster management plays an important part in child protection as well as in overall community disaster risk reduction. When children rely on public or special transportation to and from school, transportation planning and road safety become an integral part of school safety program. In this direction, it is advisable to form a bus safety team with the responsibility of ensuring safe boarding of all students on the school bus. It should regularly take feedback from the boarders about any violations of traffic rules by the driver. The situation in today's world is transforming at a rapid pace due to many factors. The threat from terrorist and extremist is one of important factors to widen the scope of school safety program. Incidents like the Westland school attack killing over 300 people, 186 of them children, Yobe school shooting in Nigeria, and the recent Peshawar school attack which claimed 141 precious lives, including that of 132 innocent students, have made us all think of inculcating this aspect into the holistic concept of school safety. Children are the most vulnerable section of the society, but among them also, there are even more vulnerable groups, which include children with special needs, differently abled children, and HIV-affected children, etc. Attending to their needs and issues in event of a disaster forms an important part of the school safety program. Pursuing with the same inclusive approach, gender-specific issues should also be appropriately addressed. Children of different age react and emote differently in the event of a danger or a disaster. They should be provided psychosocial support according to their varying needs. Teachers play an important role in the psychosocial rehabilitation of the affected students. Therefore, training of teachers in this aspect forms an important part of the school safety program. With an effective school safety program, we can ensure minimal damage to school infrastructure and also save precious young lives. School safety program prepares us to handle emergencies and keep our children and staff safe. We must recognize that school safety is a dynamic process where every stakeholder has to contribute both at the collective as well as individual level to ensure the safety of the children who are the future of a society. Always keep this motto in mind. Be aware and prepare, not scared.